Um, we actually have a few changes to the agenda. The housekeeping articles we will not need to discuss because John has spoken to the town council and um, evidently there's, there's certain things that the town clerk is allowed to change. So um, you're working out what the details are of exactly what can be changed and what can't be? Yeah, so there was, uh, Connor and I had a conversation. He was under the impression that he couldn't change really anything, formatting, typos, anything like that. But there's been some clarification where he can, and it's, I won't get into it, but it's certain situations where he can't. Um, so there's a book that I've gone through that have marked all these small changes. He's going to go through, make the changes that he can, and then probably for the next town meeting, we'll have some housekeeping articles for the ones that he can't change. Excellent. Yep. So item four and five on our list are crossed off for tonight and for oh, this town nice. meeting. We have a member of the public here, and I, I was just going to offer that we could talk about what you're interested in first, if you'd like. That'd be excellent. So, yeah, my name is Linda Moore, and I'm from up to the table. Oh, sure. Of course. Can you get me on? <laughs> so, I'm Linda Moore, and I'm with Vesta Real Estate Group in Holliston. And um, so, I'm here because we have some potential clients that would like to. Um, be operators as Airbnb in the town of Hopkinton. Oh, okay. So, and we just want to make sure that we're following the state and the town guidelines as far as that goes. And so, okay. Um, and I know that um, there is an operator already, as far as I know, in in Hopkinton. But there is some controversy around it, and then possibly that there. Um, I'm just wondering, like, what departments would be making decisions on that? Okay, John. If I'm not mistaken, since it's not on the agenda for tonight, we can't talk about it. Is that um, <coughs> yeah, the only thing we talked about was the fact that we were putting it off. There can't be there can't be deliberation. There can't be deliberation. So, okay. I mean, there's a question. I could probably answer the question, but I don't think the board can discuss Airbnbs as okay. a zoning issue. Okay. So um, it is something that we want to look into on our you know it's it's on our work plan to to con to discuss um you know the short-term rentals and <clears throat> sometime in the next um several months and, and prepare it for it'll be 2021 town meeting uh the cutoff for the 2020 town meeting to put anything into the bylaws um is you know basically this meeting because then it has to go through some other steps <laughs> um so um uh, that's you know what I know f for now right now there are no specific rules as far as I know in the zoning bylaws about short-term rentals so um, nothing nothing specific governing it you know on a personal note I would recommend that any you know p people who are thinking about it be you know they talk to their neighbors and <laughs> they you know make sure that they've got some support in the local neighborhood um right so that it doesn't become a big issue <laughs> right right yeah. because uh, you know the way i see it is if someone wants to get into it and then things might change yeah down the road so they have to be aware of that because there's no rules yet so that's very true <laughs> yes yeah, so i just true. yeah i'm just trying to i guess gather information to see what i can um, support our clients that okay. are interested so. so if i may jump in there yes, has please. been discussion at the building department uh level so the zoning enforcement officer is the one who makes the decision on the interpretation of the zoning on the ground um, and they've had people that have complained about somebody who was renting a house as an Airbnb and I don't know where they landed but they were discussing as to whether that was an allowed use because it wasn't technically renting out your house for a renter it was more of as Airbnb is supposed to be short-term hotel -y type thing um, and if that's an allowed use in that district again don't know where they landed on that so you may want to talk to them it's Chuck Cadlick and Mike Shepard up there. Mm -hmm. um, they could probably give you a better idea as to where they fall if somebody were to ask them about it. Right. Because um, it's really up to their interpretation as to what the definition of that use is. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for your information. Thank you. And, you know, we'll probably ask for them to um, give us input when we start discussing it. <laughs> okay. So it'll be posted on the next Yes, yes, it will be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
I did not prepare anything for residential fire sprinklers. But what has been suggested is that um, some wording encouraging people to look at um, residential fire sprinklers um, be put into some of the um, guidelines, um, rules, and regs. I don't know if it would be in a zoning bylaw, um, so it wouldn't be. And therefore, um, if it's if it's in say subdivision regs, something like that, it doesn't need to go through town meeting. Am I correct? Uh, correct. Correct. Okay. So um, from that standpoint, I think we can talk about it um, just in general right now. It's no, there's no deadline for it. So um, so we will be able to continue this discussion in more depth and get the fire chief to come in and, and you know, uh, discuss it with us as well. But um, for instance, uh, let's see, um, when we were at the demonstration of the fire sprinklers, I think it was, um, um, somebody suggested to me, who was it? Um, <laughs> Somebody suggested to me that, that we could put in there um, that, at least for subdivisions, um, that a developer of a subdivision would have to justify their decision not to put sprinklers in. So, because we cannot require them, that's state law. Cannot require them. But we can make them think about them. <laughs> and, um, and that's, you know, one thing that um, did happen in a recent recent subdivision that came before the planning board um, because of some shared and long longer than normal um, uh, driveways yeah um, and you know the the developer was saying yeah I really wasn't aware of you know the the newer technology basically about fire sprinklers and so, um, you know, that, that enabled the planning board to, um, yes, since you're putting in fire sprinklers, that satisfies the need of the, you know, the, the issue that, you know, planning board would have with long driveways and, and possibly shared driveways and harder to reach areas. So it's one of those things that we might want to encourage. Would that be a special permit or variance type issue that if, if you're if you need some special consideration maybe one way to to get that approval like a longer driveway or longer cul-de-sac those types of you know over a thousand feet type things right then condition i i think it's very important for that but i think also that that just is a a point of question when you're looking at subdivisions at the planning board that it's a good question to ask it's having been to the, the presentation, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to be a huge expense to add on to home building, but it, it seems to have a huge benefit yep. if it's ever required. So just to see it in, in the questionnaire when you're going through the subdivision review process, mm -hmm. which you know doesn't make it a zoning thing, but just makes it a review, a review thing. Yep. I think would be a phenomenal thing to do, just to put it out there in the forefront. And yes, if if we're talking about longer driveways or whatever extraneous, whatever we're talking about, then yes, that's a mitigating thing that you can yep. look at and say, okay, if you're doing this, but it's it's something that we should throw out there for developers just to just to consider because I don't, I did not get the impression that it was a huge expense at construction. And the benefits down the road are phenomenal. Yeah. So I think it's a, it would be a great thing just to add to the subdivision questionnaire, I guess, when you're, when you're reviewing something. Great. Well, I, this came up with a couple of small houses in my neighborhood. And I believe that the benefit is very, very strong when you do have these long driveways or the subdivisions, which is multiple houses that you can pre-plan, but like a little small house that's being rebuilt because the old house is falling down shouldn't, you know, and the fire hydrant is, you know, at the corner of the lot, they shouldn't be required to. So I think it's like a, a guideline right? Um, based on the circumstances. It's not a variance. It's not a special permit, but it would be 
definitely a guideline the planning board should look at mm -hmm. and keep in you know mind that it may not be a big expense for a million dollar house but a three hundred thousand dollar house the percentage of that expense is significant so I look at those things as you know you got to pay you got to incentivize people to you know build housing that's going to be effective for all levels of you know age groups and everything like that and some of these things are just making these houses just too expensive mm -hmm. but it would it wouldn't be a requirement it would just right, be a right well now a this was the first time i heard that it's the, not a requirement the because the state to make you go yeah huh maybe that's something that we should do maybe right. that makes sense at this point you negotiated the planning board right mm. and and i don't think ron um don't want to speak for you ron but um i think ron was pointing out uh, the special permit or variance is for an extra long driveway and that could be a mitigating this could be a mitigating right thing for that variance so Thank you. yeah <laughs> so it's not it's not in the situation where there's no no variance needed because it's a short driveway and it's got it a, got it I got it backwards I'm yeah, sorry so, no, no, I, that's okay. but, I, but I do know that yes I've, I've sat through the presentations of the fire department before and they've talked about the how the truck can't make it through a gully because it gets stuck or it can't get underneath the bow of a tree because no one's cut the tree and you know all these yeah, things and and so especially with these long driveways but a little house that's close to the street where the fire hydrant is 20 feet away I mean and it might not be a benefit right um, but also again with with and, and potentially only with larger houses because um, I, I certainly haven't done the numbers on it but um, insurance rates are lower. This will cost benefit, but uh, you know it can definitely save people money. Mm -hmm. The owners, you know, not the developers per se, but you know, they, the owners. So yeah. certain houses that have well, it might it may be more expensive to add the system, whereas if you have town water supply, that the, the yes, the fire chief said that helps too. And yes, yeah. that makes a difference. But um, the um, the water use for residential sprinklers is really actually pretty low mm -hmm. um, and much lower than the water that they use for um, fighting a fire mm -hmm. so you know if there's water pressure issue in your area for instance it actually would be a benefit to have fire sprinklers yeah. versus you know going go, uh, assuming that the 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 fire department is going to be just no problem. Did so. the fire chief offer um, a way of putting the sprinklers in after a house is built? Like there is a way, but that gets more expensive. So, um, yeah. So I, I think it would make sense to at least re recommend to the planning board that they put it into their subdivision review process. Uh, yeah, at the very happen. least, mm -hmm. you can put it on the outline, mm -hmm. and then maybe we can put it in the regs in some way to prompt developers to investigate that see if it makes sense you know see if you know there there's other circumstances that would recommend it to to be in that case that sort of thing okay good thanks okay um, next expiration of permits John um, you found these permits do have no expiration date current currently stormwater management and earth removal permit yes but they're not zoning they're not zoning. they're general bylaws okay. so again something that we can look at probably for planning board might want to talk about this and then propose something for town meeting rather than Zach okay because the planning board is the authority on these they're general bylaws okay got it but it would, it would just go through a planning board. So, you know, just curiosity, um, what would you think is a reasonable amount of time? Um, usually for our permits, we're two to three years. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that makes sense. I mean, um, the earth removal permits really for construction mm -hmm. and the renewals of earth removal permits are good for a year. So um, that may be something to look at if you just want to do a year. So three years with, you know, renewable. Possibly. At one year increments or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
and stormwater it, it may not have an expiration because it's not necessarily a construction permit and that might be why but um, we've come up with some situations where it might be an issue and whether those issues you know an approved plan that then doesn't get built and then somebody wants to work on the same permit but um, but they're outdated changed yeah outdated so situation yeah. so again it, it might be a, a too specific situation where putting an expiration doesn't really make sense but that's something that i think the board who issues them and has knowledge of them should look at and okay think about have, have there been recent incidences where these have created problems for us not problems just they have come up there's questions yeah like there there are some approved subdivision plans that have l languished for a long period of time so subdivision plans if they're approved uh, and partially even partially constructed are basically approved forever so they could do phase one and then wait and then, 20 years and, and yes. do phase two and come back to do and phase at that two. point if they've got so certain subdivisions that have already been approved there was no stormwater management permit in effect at that time so they're kind of grandfathered in but moving forward um, if they are issued a stormwater management permit and then the stormwater standards change they would still be under the other permit um, which may cause problems in stormwater management. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, good, thanks. All right, um, I sent an attachment late, like, you know, an hour ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it was the same attachment I'd sent previously at our last meeting that we weren't able to discuss because it wasn't on the agenda. Um, and that has to do with the signage and um, re in relation to the downtown corridor project. So um, I highlighted, well, I basically, I took the bylaw and I imported it into Word so then I could make changes to it. Um, so I highlighted a few things and, and it seemed to me that it was only, and I, the, the reason I highlighted things, I thought they were s somewhat relevant to the situation, um, but not that they all needed changing. But it looked like um, on page, well, the, let's see, one, it's page 122, or the second page of the, <laughs> this. Um, um, no, on the, the following page. So, so basically the, um, the, 30, the 30 days, I'm sorry. About Banners, and then there's temporary signs. Okay, temporary signs, A, is uh, no more than two temporary signs displayed on a lot, neither of which shall exceed, and no more than 30 days. Um, none of the, the clauses related to having a temporary sign or sandwich board that was not on the lot of that business. So, and... And that's what I wanted to address a little bit because I think what we have, we have at least imagined, um, and I don't know if any particular business owners have, have expressed that as well, but, um, but that it would be at the limits of the construction that we would want some temporary signs possibly um, indicating where people could go to get to these businesses. So, um, so that's what I tried to craft. Um, by just adding another clause to this. So, and then the other piece of this is that, um, is whether or not we, we very specifically talk about this being during the downtown corridor project starting in 2020 and expecting to last for approximately two years, um, or if we say whenever construction is taking place on these streets. So, um, and and make it much more of a broad thing to to address any time construction is affecting businesses on the main streets of town so yeah, from a chamber perspective we haven't really talked about this being for any construction yeah the the real focus is just on this because of the the duration of the expected disruption 
Um, and the language that you put in there for E and F, just of, of, of allowing that to be expanded, you know, to a, you know, a couple of blocks on either side of the business, and our expectation of the 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 entire area is not going to be under construction all of the time right. during that two-year period of time. It, it, they may be here for a, a month, move down here for a month, move down here for a month, and then it's off for the until the next season. Yeah, so, that's my yeah my understanding of it. So. But then again, the whole downtown corridor project has not even been approved yet at the hundred percent level. Right. So, you know, starting this in April of 2021 is at this point seemingly an optimistic goal okay i hadn't heard that well i mean the the yeah. town is working very aggressively to get the 100 percent approval yeah 2021 not 2020 not 2020 yeah it was supposed to start in april 2020 right after the right but right. it hasn't it hasn't even gone out for bid yet oh yeah so i who who knows when it's going to start okay okay got it so from the chamber perspective, does it, this does this seem like a good idea that this, the business this language are? here? It, it, we we uh, the the board took a look at it, voted on it, said this is this is really a, a big help to the businesses. A lot of the help that the business community is looking for is not zoning related. Right, I know that. It's yeah. parking related. It's communication related. Yeah, it's absolutely. all of these other things that are not necessarily zoning. Be, the signage is the one thing that is zoning related, and this would be a huge help. Okay. Other thoughts on this wording on the, or other aspects of it? I, I think the wording is fine for this project. I think if you try and encompass it over any construction area, then you're going to run into all kinds of problems because what's construction? Yeah. And, you know, this guy's, I don't know, putting a new front on his building. Now, does that entitle me to do all of this other stuff? You know, I just think it's, the goal here, in my opinion, is to help the downtown businesses, which I think is, is key. I think it's incredibly important. I think they're gonna have a very difficult time during this whole process. And I think we wanna help them. But if you don't limit it to downtown construction during the corridor project, you're going to encounter a great deal of resistance from people that are going to envision all kinds of heinous things going on. You, it's just going to be interpreted as being, you know, this guy's doing this to his property, so therefore this is going to happen. It, I think it needs to be contained to the downtown corridor project. Makes sense. What's? Uh, I wrote to you what I thought was a, a better way of approaching this um, because otherwise the next time there is some kind of a construction project we'll be back here trying to rewrite this thing um, and I think that defining what construction is meaning pulling up you know construction in the road for over 30 days is a better way of approaching it than just saying that these four streets are going to get that attention because the guy who's got the business on Lumber Street or South Street or something like that is not being evenly, you know, handled here. That's my only point to this. And I think that for us to determine in advance of this project exactly where signage is going to be needed or how it's going to look or anything like that, oh, yeah. forget yeah. about it. You know, I mean, I just don't think that's a, a fair way. I think that by giving um, our um, municipal inspection service people the, the right to give you know some leeway on on the spot is the way to approach this and that's the way I would recommend okay so I, yeah, I think it should I, I agree I need I think it should be more expansive because it could happen the, the same thing can be used anywhere but at the same time yes it's, um, people will try to misinterpret it but somebody has to s stop it somewhere so mm -hmm. hopefully the enforcement officer because I'm yes, I agree completely that they will try to misinterpret it. Maybe we can make it even more specific. That says, during the period of construction, that blocks entry or becomes a is a barrier right. of entry to a business or something like that to make it yeah. even more narrower. But it needs 
It shouldn't just be downtown corridor project. Okay. So any business affected by construction, um, construction abutting the business or abutting parking for the business, is that or affecting access parking? Okay, construction. I'm okay with that if you define what that is. Yeah, that's my that's affecting access to the business parking. or access to parking. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Is the intent to um, provide businesses with relief for construction that may be on like a neighboring property, or is it more for construction that's taking place within the right of way? Within the right of way, and so maybe that's specified construction yeah. within the right of way because yeah. that should encompass road work and sidewalk. Yeah. That's work. more specific, and you know, because someone doing something to their house doesn't really that's right. not. And if they've got construction uh, trucks in the way, the chances are they're not going to be there for over 30 days, right? Which is, but I, I, again, the, the shape of the sign, where it's located, what type of sign, I mean, those things should probably follow our general uh, guidelines, but be with the inspection. Yeah, the, the wording, my wording doesn't have anything about those kind of design issues. So, okay, um, but we could, um, okay, let's see. So any business affected by construction within the right of way, do, is it appropriate, is it correct to say abutting the business or is that the wrong term? Is there, well, it could be two doors down that the road is closed. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> in the right of that's I, I mean I've I've seen all these things. It's like you know, that's why it's very hard to write a bylaw like this without the good judgment of somebody who's going to look at it and say, you know, that sign's blocking blocking the sight line of the traffic. So my suggestion could be, and feel free to shoot this one down, um, to say. <laughs> Construction within the right of way that can be reasonably determined to affect access to a business, or access to the parking for the business. Or yeah. access, I would I would say, making it general affect the business is affecting the yeah. parking of the business. Yeah. yeah. And so I think putting that reasonably determined gives because it's going to be the zoning enforcement officer who makes this determination as to whether that business is affected. Is affected. Right. And so I think if they can say yeah reasonably. You're right. You're affected, and I, I don't think people are going to be upset if you know construction is here, and there's a business here, a business here, and a business here, and all of them say it's affected. But then the one that's over here that's clearly not affected, I think people might say, okay, that that's a problem. But the other ones, I don't. In these limited situations, I don't think is going to be a, right because each individual business person can make the argument to the inspection person and say, you know. I, even though this is not right in front of my door, all the people who park for my business is over here, and that's that's affecting me. Right. I guess the situation that I would throw out there is if Muffin House, for example, has construction going on in front of it, can Bills then say that that construction is reasonably affecting their business because people may park near Muffin House? I would say no. Yeah, it depends, but that's the, depends that's the on the scope of the, right. yeah, the work. But I would say that that situation right there could probably give the zoning enforcement officer the, the ability to say, no, that's not really reasonably affecting your business. Right. Mm -hmm. If the Froyo place across the street said that, then I think they have an argument. But that, le that at least leaves it up to the subjectivity of the zoning enforcement officer. Okay. So the way I'm thinking about <clears throat> how broad this is, because I feel like if, if this works, if this makes sense and it works, um, we can easily use this wording and add it on a more permanent basis. Yep. So 
Yeah, this is not just a bylaw just for this project. This should be in in our bylaws in general so that any time the businesses are affected by long term, you know, street projects or, you know, whatever project it is, I mean, we're we're looking at like major stuff in our area here. I, I think Carol's point was a was a really good one, which says if we limit the scope of this to the downtown corridor project, and this this I mean we're going to try this for a couple of years. If it does work, we can always come back and say we had great success with this. We'd like to recommend now incorporating this at. Yeah, you know, in any time that this situation comes up, but rather than try to do both things in this town meeting, let's let's narrow the scope to this, and then and then come back to it. Sorry. That I think that 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 makes the most sense to me. Is that is that we treat it narrowly at first, and you know, and see see what people say at town meeting as well. You know. If everybody thinks it should be a broader situation, wouldn't you, know, you get more? Ex wouldn't you get more support from more business owners? Um, you know, if it was a rule that kind of encompassed a larger area, business owners maybe. Yeah, business owners. Residents, maybe not. I. Hmm. I'm not sure. If if there's it's strong support for it at town meeting, somebody could make an amendment to say, you know, we we would like this to be. Uh, in all cases in so, all yeah. cases but that's not necessarily coming from the planning board then that's coming from a petitioner or a, a, an I, amendment my personal feeling is the immediate need is the downtown situation sure and and mostly think, because of the extent of I think construction be presented right? at town meeting as a downtown quarter thing and if it is well received then there's no reason it can't go back on Zach's agenda for next year to modify it to be any construction situation there's there's nothing else immediately to my knowledge and I may be totally off base but to my knowledge there's there's nothing immediately in the burners that would impact businesses like the downtown corridor project is going to impact businesses and I I would be reluctant to make it a town-wide general thing that this is a situation in any construction things because I would be leery that that would diminish the possibilities for the downtown people and I really think the downtown people need the town support. I th I, those businesses yeah, I think no, are going to suffer incredibly from this project. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to, to narrow just... it to get it through for them and then we can expand on it next year. Does it make sense to limit it to the downtown business district? Does that include all the businesses that would be affected it by goes, this project? It goes approximately from Town Hall to Summer Street. That doesn't include like West Main Street down by where there's going to be construction in the road. By Wood Street? No, I'm talking about where Lumber Street hits West Main. That's not That's part of the downtown board project. project. No, I know. I'm, I'm just saying we have a project that's going to be happening okay. there where they're going to be widening. Um, they're going to be fixing West Main and Lumber Street, and those businesses are going to be affected. And when, when is that project scheduled? I don't know. I, I haven't heard anything haven't about heard. that. I'm just responding to the sentiment that it should be for the downtown businesses. Mm -hmm. And I think that the downtown business district, while it doesn't cover the entirety of the project, it covers the businesses. I'm trying to think of anything really past Summer Street. There's not much. And there's n really not many businesses past Town Hall. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I mean, bills. Well, so. I mean, if you go down to Pleasant Street, you've got businesses there. You've, you know, all the way, I mean, there are businesses on, Main Street all the way down to Wood Street. There the are. Opposite direction. And yeah. But I guess I'm wondering if they need signage because if they're the the, um, uh, the daycare center, do they need signage to say a temporary signage to say we're here, we're open? Probably not. 
but I would still like to give them the option to put it up if they elected to do that. Okay. And I, I think leaving the language as broad as those businesses affected by the downtown corridor project, as opposed to, I mean, the downtown business district is a narrower district. Defining it as business effect, businesses affected by the downtown corridor project, I think is that well not not. But we've got specific enough. streets named in that. Right, but West Main Street goes all the way past my house. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what, you know, I, I would prefer to have it that versus the downtown business district because, like I said, there, there, are, other, there are other projects that are contemplated that are going to affect businesses. Right. So why, why would we come back like in a year from now trying to do this again? We've done the signage bylaws, I don't know, over and over and over again. But by leave, leaving it a broader area, and the zoning enforcement officer could say, "No, your business really isn't being affected by this construction, so we're not we're right. not going to allow you this thing." Or they make the case, "I am being affected by it. I want some latitude in in these temporary signs that I want to put up." I okay. understand that, Mike. Entirety of Hayden Row. Right. I, I was Main Street. It's all but West not Street. a lot of businesses and on Hayden Row. It was other than I was listing those streets as as thinking if we wanted to open it up to all construction projects everywhere, um, you know, that that would be you know we would list the main commercial streets potentially commercial, but otherwise I don't think you know if we're if we're going to focus this on the downtown corridor project. I think we just say any businesses then reasonably determined by the zoning enforcement officer to affect access to the business during the downtown corridor project. You know, so, and then not list streets. I wouldn't have a zoning bylaw just for this one project. It's just the way I That's, feel about yeah. it. Okay, but I think I think I've heard that at least three of us are saying um, we think that that's what's necessary right now. Have a is zoning focus completely project. on the downtown corridor project because of what an extreme stressor this is going to be on those, those businesses. And I want to be able to present I, something. I think it should I, be handled I by the municipal inspection person. I, I don't think it should be a, by, a bylaw, that's all. Well, I don't think it can be handled, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it can be handled by, <coughs> excuse me, the building inspector if there isn't a bylaw for them to fall back on. <coughs> so there's no like, <coughs> temporary guidance for, for that right now. See, that's it. That's there so there are temp there is guidance for temporary signs in the bylaw, which is right. what this is trying to change. Right. Because it's a limit to 30 days. But I guess there's no temporary rules or regulations for the inspection services for like helping um, construction no. for construction, no. which you know to me that's like a, it would be something broad based. It's like yeah, they should be able to help in any of these cases with and reasonable they, guidance. And you're right; they should be able to. But my immediate concern is this project, and I think you need to. And use this project as a way to get that, you know, the more broad-based thing to, to, to happen. I mean, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I, I feel like, the, yes, I feel very sympathetic to small businesses. I work with them all the time. And when something like this is like a tornado hit that hits them and knocks them out of business, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not even sure the temporary sign is going to keep them in business, Carol. I'm, I, you know, so whatever the <coughs> municipal inspector can do to help the businesses under these, you know, these extreme circumstances, they should be able to do that. Historically, we have had a tough time getting changes that appear to be big through town meeting. I don't think this is a big. I think it's a, it's a, it's a help. It's like a, you know, it's a. I. I understand what you're saying, and I, and I I agree with what you're saying, 
but I would be reluctant to is if you want to limit it to the downtown corridor project how do you define that how do you define the limits of that project i don't think if you list just the streets that accomplishes it yeah, and but i don't if think you, if we, you call it the downtown corridor project and let the building inspector determine whether or not you're in pick, impacted by that project does yeah. that not allow the leeway for and we don't list them to make that decision? That's what I'm saying. Do you guys see any other bylaw that talks about a specific project no. that a bylaw is created? That's why I'm, I'm I'm kind of like this doesn't make sense to me. It's a it's a it's a I understand what we're all trying to do. I'm just trying to figure out the the best method to do it. Yeah, and uh, I'm also having a little bit of difficulty understanding what would be the worst case scenario if we open it up for everybody. I'm trying to see the other end of it. So what uh, other than the, I see the risk. That it may, the, it, if it is a bigger thing, it's harder to pass in town meeting. That's one. But other than that, even if we open it up, what would? Because a worst case scenario is a sign will be up on during the period of construction. So it's not a, it's not going to be a permanent sign. It's right. going to be. So I'm, I'm. That's why I'm like I'm a little confused about why. I don't. I don't think there's any big risk to it, other than whether or not it will pass in town meeting. If it does not pass at town meeting as a bigger, broader thing, mm -hmm. then I believe that the downtown businesses will be... No, I, I agree. So, why don't, we, I so, then, so why don't we put it in as a broader based guideline and then, um, you know, we can change it on the floor? Because if we, we have to decide on the change on the floor before it gets voted on. Because right. if it gets voted down, we can't then introduce, oh, how about how about this yeah, step? You, you view it on while while it's being negotiated on the floor. You mean just wait to hear the, the general? Thing, yeah, yeah. Because but the people who get up and talk are not always representative of the way the vote's going to go. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. So maybe we do this. We say during the period of construction, specifically downtown corridor project for now, and and make an amendment to just remove the specifically downtown corridor project if it seems. Like such as a downtown, you know, corridor project, maybe that's all right. So maybe we should such put it as. forth as a downtown corridor project with Rhea standing up and putting in a friendly amendment that this should be all no. That's backwards. That's backwards. You don't make zoning bylaws for a specific event. You make them for, you know, ongoing. So you can stand up and make that argument. No, I'm not going to stand up and make an argument. I, I think that if just, you put just this, like I don't you, think paragraph G should be in the. Uh, <laughs> yep. And you're going to make a friendly amendment. I think if you went in with a more general thing and you saw that it was being negative, then you say, well, this is really to help the downtown corridor project businesses affected by that particular thing, and you you enhance it that way, not going backwards because I've never seen bylaws specifically call out a specific project okay I know so, what I really want is that we can send something to the planning board I and understand. if we just keep arguing this one point back and forth we're not going to get there um, we I just think the definition of the project can be defined by the 100% submission project that went to the Department of Transportation. There's a very clear cut schematic of exactly what's included in this project. We could define it as. But we don't want to write a bylaw for the specific project. We want to write a bylaw that includes that project, is the reason why the bylaw is being written, but therefore also is for future projects, not just that one project. Yeah, well, I, I don't happen to agree with that. I know. So. And I'm not coming up with a better argument. So if I can play devil's advocate, mm -hmm. there's businesses on Church Street that won't be within the limits of work for the downtown project. But they may be affected because people can't park a door down. How would they be 
captured in including it in the downtown corridor project limits? They're impacted by the downtown corridor project. Okay, but then project. I guess the question is, where does that stop? Where do, how do you define impact of the downtown corridor business? If somebody by the building inspector. Yes. And his judgment. I think that puts that could potentially put um, an undue burden on him. Uh, maybe uh -huh. not necessarily an undue burden, but a burden to determine what is affected by the downtown corridor project. And the, the the cases may be one or two, so it might not even be worth arguing about. So but if you didn't, if you if you did not define the downtown corridor project, yep. and define it as Rhea is talking about it, does that help your Church Street people? I think it does because it would be any construction, and you can determine if it affects them. If it's the downtown corridor project that's affecting them, that limits it to a certain scope of work. That if somebody has a certain opinion as to, well, this work doesn't really affect you, but maybe, I can't think of a specific example right now, but um, if you limit it to that scope of work, that may be the difference between construction versus the downtown corridor project construction. So Does that makes sense. I, I, I can't. It would probably maybe, help if I could think of an example, but I can't think of an example right now. So maybe I, so. I'm trying this. Maybe maybe the bylaw doesn't. Now I'm totally changing gears, but maybe the bylaw doesn't specifically reference the downtown corridor project, but it's presented that way. Four. The downtown corridor. To, that's what I was saying. To so during road construction, and then you know defined by or construction within the by, it, right of way. Construction within the right of way can be reasonably determined by the zoning enforcement officer or whatever is the correct person to affect access to the business to a business or parking for the business. Do you, so that's the definition. Parking? I would say access. I, I th thought we discussed taking out the parking and just saying yeah, access to the business. Yeah. Because that includes right. parking. Yeah, it'll be clean. Access to the business? Yeah. Yes. So oh, it's okay. pedestrian that access and parking. That includes parking? So it could be I mean, walking, yeah, biking, if they can't park, parking. then that's access to the business. Or Drone, adds phone. barriers to entry to the business? <laughs> Any kind of barrier. Barrier through parking. I think leaving it broader by just saying yeah. affects access. The concern with, the concern with adding barrier is that it implies a physical barrier. Oh, okay. <laughs> it could be a mental barrier. Hmm. Okay, so businesses affected by road construction. Defined as construction within the right of way that can reasonably be, ter be determined. Can I've got it all in the wrong order here. Are so sidewalks considered right of way? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank That's you. part of it, yeah. And I, I, just I would check. I would suggest taking out road construction and just saying construction within the right of way, because if it is part, if it is sidewalk construction, that's not road construction. But it is construction within the right of way. Okay. <laughs> okay. So can be reasonably determined by the zoning enforcement officer to affect access to a business. Um, Business businesses may display temporary sign or sandwich board within two, two blocks of construction for the purpose of directing customers to parking, hours of operation, etc., or special instructions. Um, the limitations on duration noted in this section, in the section or the section above, I don't know. The, this section. This section. Yeah, you're still um, are not applicable during the period of construction. But uh, the D, D and E do they apply? Because D and E overrule these two, right? D and E are the Patriots Day one and the election one. It doesn't change anything about those. No. Because those can still be taking place during. During um, construction, during the same yeah, during the same time frame, it's a different issue, really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is F, and we're just talking about, and I'm not even saying such as the downtown corridor project, but um, 
but we can make clear that it is specifically for the downtown corridor project but we wanted to word it in such a way as to be applicable mm -hmm. during appropriate other right-of-way construction so I think I think that addresses everyone's concerns okay business access Okay, so right now I've got this as a title. It's kind of like a, a title and then some points underneath. And, you know, you can look at it and see if that it works with the way the zone zoning is, should be worded. <laughs> okay, um, or formatted. So business access during construction and right of way. So that's the title. Maybe it should say something about signs. <laughs> It's under the sign bylaw. Okay, right. sounds good. Okay, defined as construction within the right of way can be reasonably determined by the zoning enforcement officer to affect access to a business. Businesses may display a temporary sign or sandwich board within two blocks of construction for the purpose. So, within two blocks of construction, not within two blocks of the business. So, is that is that fairly clear? Yes. Okay. But just as you said a sign or sandwich board they may need more than one sign or sandwich board I'm just yes I agree I would say sign with a with an s and a parentheses sure please yep <laughs> and I, don't, I don't know if we want to um, say blocks because blocks are not a defined term in our bylaw okay within 200 feet well usually a block is an eighth of a mile so maybe say a quarter of a mile is that too much an eighth of a mile i don't know scale how many feet how many feet is that <laughs> i i think it's going to be easier to visualize if you get it in feet instead of miles miles okay within X feet of construction <laughs> of um, of the cons of construction zone. You want to say so? Six hundred and sixty feet. Huh? Uh, an eighth of a mile is six hundred and sixty feet. Six hundred feet <laughs> of construction for the purpose of directing customers to parking, indicating hours of operation, etc. Sorry, two hundred and twenty feet. I don't know what I was. 300 feet. 300 feet. I'm sorry. It was that's it did it by yards. It is 660 feet. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 600 feet. 600, 600 feet. Okay. And the limitations on duration noted in this section are not ac applicable during the period of construction. Great. Okay. And I'm sure it'll get some tweaks. That's the planning board has <laughs> its its say at it too. So, okay. All right. So, do you want me to read it again, or is it, okay. <laughs> Since we worked really hard on it, yes. <laughs> Business access during construction and right-of-way, this would be F, paragraph F. <coughs> Defined as construction within the right-of-way that can be reasonably determined by the zoning enforcement officer to affect access to a business. Businesses may display should we say may apply for, apply with the, may apply? I, I think may display, let, let them put the sign up that they want to put up. No, there's, there's no permit for a temporary sign. Right. And they've already had to ask whether or not they could put up a temporary sign. They have? Not necessarily. Well, did they not have to have the building enforcement officer determine that they were impacted? That's what I was just trying to figure out, yeah, since they have to. So they had to have somebody say, yes, you're impacted, before they go and get a sign to put up 660 feet away from their not business. Not necessarily. So with temporary signs, they put them up, and then if they're just, the way that it's enforced is if they're up longer than they should be. Then they, it's an then exception they, then they approach yeah. them to take rather it down. than a permission approach. Okay, yeah. Um, okay. I just modified this one small way, and after the definition, the next bullet point saying affected businesses may display temporary signs or sandwich boards. So 
implying that again these are the the businesses that are affected by this construction and if anybody disagrees with that business being affected by it they can go to the zoning enforcement officer and say hey they're not affected they shouldn't be doing that right right okay affected businesses may display temporary sign or sandwich boards within it's temporary signs and <laughs> or sandwich boards within 600 feet of construction for the purpose of directing customers to parking etc cetera, etc cetera. and the limitations on duration noted in this section are not applicable during the period of construction okay so if I have a business okay. that's got a, a, a truck out in front of it impacting my right of way I'm gonna walk down the street 600 feet and plop my sandwich board in front of Bill's Pizza and Bill's Pizza is got nothing to say about it nope it's in the right way that's right okay now there is there is something above in no sign shall be displayed so as to create a hazard obstruct the line of sight at an intersection or obstruct pedestrian travel on public sidewalks <clears throat> it says that yes you in have general to. regulations so you still have to abide by all the regulations it's the, the main goal here is the current temporary sign says you can put a, a sign right in front of your business yeah. mm -hmm. we're just saying you can put you it you can, you can, no, I'm just wondering what the reaction is going to be to 600 feet from my business is somebody else's business and and I'm going to go plop a sandwich board in front of their business and what the reaction of that business owner is going to be. I'm just bringing up the question. I think they should be happy because you're trying to encourage more traffic down there in general. Yeah. So everyone's going to benefit. I would, I would say you all should talk to each other at the chamber. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to think it's a, it's a business community and they're all yeah, willing exactly. to help each other. support each other. <laughs> yeah, they're well, selling the exact same sandwich. But the business community is not one voice. I know. It's I know. hundreds of businesses, yeah. many of whom are not part of the Chamber of Commerce. That's true. So, yes, it is a business community, but it is, it, it's not just one entity. So if I could suggest three changes. Sure. Um, there's the part where it's the uh, zoning enforcement officer reasonably determines. Can you read that part back? Yeah. Construction within the right of way that can be reasonably determined by the zoning enforcement officer to affect access to a business. I would That's wordsmith it say the, that the zoning enforcement officer reasonably determined or you, you, making it active rather than passive. So that he he would reasonably agree that it affects? Is that what you're or trying to Or determines reasonably limits access. Mm. I'd have to play because reasonably that. determined is is key. I think that's key. That's more key than the zoning enforcement officer piece of it. Uh, we need to define who is reasonably determining it. But but um, it's the you earlier said that that reasonably determined. I mean that that phrase. I'm not saying take the reasonably determined out. I'm just trying to change the order. So oh, I know it's it's a very awkward sentence. It, yeah. I agree. I might have to word. I might wordsmith that and send it to you before the planning board. Um, the other thing was uh, of the two things were possibly putting a maximum limit on signs. So maybe saying no more than three signs, no more than four signs, because you don't want somebody to take that. Um, Put 10 signs out? Yeah. Every 10 feet I'm putting a sign. There's no limit. They might take advantage of it. You know, they might just put 15 signs all. Mm -hmm. that would be, That's a good point. That would be the concern of putting 15 signs in front of one com competitor. So maybe limit it to whatever Not to would be reason. Not to Three or four. Put some maximum limit on it. And then the other one is 600 feet, I would say, from the property line of the business not from the construction because the construction could be yeah. no that's the thing I, I was talking about from the end of construction that it should be able to be at the end of construction because you don't want somebody if the if the construction is here and the business is here and 600 feet is here the sign at 600 feet is doing them absolutely no good it needs to be at the end of construction 
What's construction? Yeah. Where there's where there's an impact to access. I mean, if what I might suggest yeah. is that <laughs> the, the town engineers have some responsibility to put signs indicating that, uh, and it might be one of those lighted display signs that says all businesses are open during construction. Yeah. And that's kind of that's leading up to the construction zone. And then the individual business says, says Bill's Pizza is open during normal business hours during construction. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a, a double light. The individual businesses can do what they want. I, I don't think that that necessarily abdicates the town, their responsibility of communicating to the general public. No, I agree with that. that yeah. Aware of these, but where is the edge of construction? construction. Yeah. But, that, but the, the town signs, I, I would expect that the town signs are going to be the one. At the edge of construction. At the ed end of construction, before the construction begins. Mm -hmm. You know, construction zone, caution, businesses are open during construction. Well, so then the construction uh, zone as determined by the zoning enforcement officer. As opposed to feet? As opposed to feet, because it'll change. But, uh, I, well, I think the 600 feet is, so we're, we're saying to that, that small business owner saying, I, I there, want you to know as you're coming up to my business, I'm open. Yeah. Right, but Ron, what she was saying is that the, it would be 600 feet up to 600 feet beyond the construction zone, like before the construction zone. So just for perspective, from the, the westernmost edge of Bill's Pizza to the easternmost edge of the Cedar Street, Grove Street, Main Street intersection is 550 feet. Okay. So I had not put in feet <laughs> to begin with when I drafted this. I said, I said, at at you know the ends of construction basically um, but I like the idea that the businesses have leeway mm -hmm. in terms of how far away from their own property line they're placing it within reason so within 600 feet of you know so within 600 feet of their property line is probably going to be anywhere between the end of construction and the property line itself I would assume so. I mean, yeah. I don't, just seeing this on, on the map, I, I doubt they'd be doing 600 feet worth of construction at a time. Yeah, no, I agree. I hope. I hope. They you would hope, doing, but then, you know. It can be torn up for it a can while. Be torn yeah, up. I mean, pieces of it could be a mess for a long period of time, and that's just where the issue. We just don't know. We, yeah, I mean, that's why I like to have somebody out there. I think it's. Charge. I, I think it's probably also important to note that this isn't going to solve all of the problems. So this is just a little piece. So maybe this is all we can do through zoning, because zoning does have to have limits, and maybe the rest of it can be done. So maybe you otherwise. say 600 feet from the property line, and if it's not adequate, then they move their signs, and it's not a problem until the zoning enforcement officer goes right. and tells them to move their sign back because it's too far away. Right. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's okay. Affected businesses may display temporary signs or sandwich boards within 600 feet of their property line. Okay. okay. I'm still working on that first sentence. Redefining. Rewording. So, how would people feel about me working on that wording with with Perfect. John afterwards? And Perfect. I can't, can't just I can't, find about that. I can't do this like this. I, I have to look at the words I know. and write. I feel and, that and way, too. And but I, we, I but we do have well to vote on it, too, to even. I handwrite everything. So the idea being that we're defining it at first by saying affected businesses. It's, it's the zoning enforcement officer reasonably determining whether or not they're affected, and they're being affected means access. Okay, so... Somehow we're going to make that work in a sentence. <laughs> I'm just okay. I, I really like John, John's point about limiting the number of signs. However, limiting the number of signs. So, yep. I mean, I, I think that we could even say up to two signs. Up to, two temporary signs. I mean, we could say points. up to four. Four. But that would mean that they could put. One, you know, go 600 mm -hmm. feet on this side of the street and 600 feet on the other side of the yep. street, and you've got one going both ways. Yep. So, 
I mean, four would be like the maximum, but that's a lot of science. That's a lot, that's of, a science. lot of science. Yeah. If, you, if you multiply it by all the potential yeah. businesses, yeah. And, it's and a lot just, of science. When, you when know the what? chamber looked at this wordage, we had a singular there. Yeah. Sign or sandwich board. And, yeah. and I didn't get any pushback from anybody saying that's not enough science. Right. Okay. But they're not, they're not there yet. They're not in the middle of the, the construction zone I understand, yet. But, it, it, but if every business in the, it, on, it, on Main Street puts up four signs. But they won't. Just works that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with up to two temporary signs or sandwich boards. Because, uh, like you said, uh, if uh, if I have to exploit it, I'm going to try to exploit it. If I see the word number four, I'm like, why not four? Yeah, so exactly. Is, you think that's going to help you, right? Good. Yes. I, I personally, I don't think businesses didn't spend money because they can spend money. I think they look at it and spend money where it's effective for them mm -hmm. to spend money. And I'm not sure that four signs is going to be any more helpful than two. Right. So I don't think they would put up four if they could put up four, if two is what they thought was going to do the job for them. Right. So and I think four looks like we're really trying to help them, and two looks like you know, we're trying to regulate them. We and are I, trying to regulate them. <laughs> oh, but, but I... <laughs> You know, there's a, the approach of, like, what, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. I, I, in my imagination, I can see everybody putting up four signs and it just being a... a Litter. Oh, yeah, but I, I honestly think that they won't businesses that. They won't spend that. money where it's effective for them. Right. And they might start with two, and if two's not working, maybe they'll put up four. But I don't think they'll start with four because they're allowed four. Well, the only reason I could I would think of four is yes this end on each this side. end this north end. south east west yes mm -hmm. that was what I was thinking too because those businesses and originally that's what I was thinking too east west traffic they're relying on traffic yeah. from all over so I think four as the maximum is reasonable okay okay and you can whack me upside of the head when. I'm tripping over signs, walking to Phipps. They can't block the right of way, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll still be able to walk to Phipps. You may have to slalom them a little bit down the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> I can take the center trail. Okay. <laughs> over. So, may I entertain a motion to send this to the planning board? <laughs> Second move. So, okay. Wordsmithing? We will wordsmith okay. that for some, yeah. especially. Um, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So this first sentence really needs some work, but I will be able, I'll send this to you. And at least it's uh, just one addition, not a little bunch of cut and pastes. Okay, good. Good, all right. The only thing else we have is approving the minutes of January 6th. Jamal, you sure you've all... That looked like an, uh, an exciting meeting I missed. <laughs> we did a lot. And and nothing nothing here, helps so more than a I'll deadline. I'll take your word right? as to whether or not it's yeah. an accurate reflection. I will move to approve the minutes as submitted. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Okay. I will entertain a... What, wait a minute. Uh, what, when's next our next meeting? meeting? When's our next meeting? <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I don't think we have Our one. next meeting is on February 3rd. It's 7 p.m. That's a Monday. And then we are not meeting again in February. So I'm sorry. I will not be here. I'll be on so, a cruise. 
In the West Indies. Wow. Ooh. In the where? The West Indies. We're going to all come along. Yeah. And then so, March 2nd is the next one? March 2nd would be the, the next one after that. Yep. Yeah, that's not scheduled. Okay. Okay, now I will entertain a, a motion Seven, to adjourn. Yeah. So moved. So moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Yay! We're done.